Good morning, everyone. My name is Valdemar. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Integrity Network, a scalable blockchain solution that enables the secure processing of sensitive data. Um, so before I'm, I'm starting to talk about more technical details, I want to give you a brief overview of the general um, blockchain industry and its challenges. So every one of you may have heard about CryptoKitties that popped up in 2017. It's about breeding and exchanging um, virtual cats that are stored as NFTs. And only one year later, one of those NFTs was sold for unbelievable 140,000 US dollars. But more important is that, is re that it revealed the performance issues on the Ethereum network. Means it created so many transactions that um, there was an overload uh, on the network and transaction prices skyrocketed. In 2018, then, the first play to earn games gained more traction like Axie Infinity, where you have been able to buy NFTs to get access to the game with the NFT, but also improve the NFTs via in-game activities. And at its peak, um, Axie Infinity was able to attract around 2 million players daily. In the same year, the Blockchain Gaming Alliance was founded, with Ubisoft as one of the founding members. And this was a strong signal underpinning the importance of blockchain gaming for even the bigger gaming studios, traditional gaming studios. In the following years, more metaverse projects popped up, like Decentraland, that are offering a virtual reality experience. And uh, one of the most um, attractive or most popular NFT projects, the Bored Apes, were able to sell around 1 billion in, or generate revenues of 1 billion US dollars um, as of today. So those numbers are already kind of indicating the rise of blockchain-based gaming. But let's have a look at uh, the financial numbers. So the generated revenues from blockchain games, or the, the whole space, were totaling up to 1.5 billion last year, and will, or it is expected to, to grow to 50 billion US dollars in just three years from now on. Looking at the investments, blockchain projects have been able to attract 4 billion US dollars last year, and it, it is expected that that number doubles next year. So that clearly indicates that um, the whole space is really growing and is on the rise, but will just basically explode in the next years with that money flowing in. So what are the challenges that blockchain-based games are facing. I mean, most of the projects are actually trying to solve issues or challenges on, on the ownership side, but missing to, to tackle really the critical points like infrastructure, speed, and graphic quality that really provides a, a, a user experience that is comparable with traditional games. Let's have a closer look at the ownership dimension. So centralized platforms are owning the game logic and also the in-game items, right? And most of the successful games are associated with huge revenues for the game studios and not for the players, right? So they don't have a stake and they, they have just a little to say in the future direction of those games. On the decentralized side, users are getting now control of their assets. They can get them, they can buy them, they can transfer them, right? And in theory, they're not even locked to a particular game. And play to earn took that even to a new, or to a new level, because now people were able to, to play and also to earn while they are playing a game, right? And they're able to not even transfer the assets in, in a virtual world, but also take them out, transfer them to the outside, to the real world, as a valuable resource. And for people in low-income countries, that can make even a decent living. 
Let's have a look at the infrastructure dimension. So centralized platforms are obviously operating centralized servers that are optimized for low latencies and breathtaking performance. And those servers, they can scale uh, flexibly with a growing user demand, be added, be removed without problems. The, the data that is produced within the game stays confidential with the game studio, and only part of that data is really published uh, to a broader audience, like maybe rankings, for example, as a feature. So we are focusing on the infrastructure part here to, to solve the, the issues of decentralized games so that those games don't have to, to deal with those low-level challenges in the future. Because currently, they're facing performance issues, right? We have seen that with the CryptoKitties case. And once a game becomes popular and is really creating a lot of transactions, that can also harm other dApps that are deployed and running on that network and the whole ecosystem with uh, skyrocketing transaction prices. The good thing is that data is publicly available, so everyone can just go on the chain and have a look at the data. But, I mean, that opens also the door for people to exploit that data. And um, we don't want to have that in certain cases. So what we are doing is we are combining the trust of Polkadot with the power of trusted execution environments. You can see here on the left the Polkadot relay chain. That is the security layer that we are using. In the center, you see our substrate-based blockchain network, our integrity parachain that is connected to that security layer. And on the left side, you can see side chains. Those side chains are holding validators that are TE-based. So we are offering a software development kit for developers to easily build side chains on our second layer without dealing with the whole complexity of the underlying infrastructure, the trusted execution environments. But let's have a closer look at two important components. First of all, Polkadot. Why did we decide to use Polkadot over other networks? It is the pooled security. Means that we can access security, shared security, that is shared among up to 100 other projects. It enables us to provide immutable and permissionless public auditability to all the processes that are happening on our chain. And it also lies the foundation for an interoperable network. So with more blockchains as parachains that are connecting to each other and communicating with each other. So we have just recently uh, finished our uh, integrations with, for example, Moonbeam and Karura to enable those communications across parachains. The second important component is teas. And no, it's not that tasty drink, Earl Grey variant, right? So trusted execution environments are specific areas uh, in the processor, in the CPU, mainly located in the main memory of a server. And they are completely isolated from the standard operating system of the server. Any data that is processed within that server is really secured from external access, means not even an administrator or hardware operator is able to access those areas. It is secured on a hardware level, not on a software level like you may know from zero-knowledge proof. Everything that happens on that second layer is actually off-chain. And the question is, I mean, how do we ensure that Nothing malicious is going on on, on, on that layer off-chain, right? How do we verify that? 
We're using a service from the hardware manufacturer that is called remote attestation. And that specific service is verifying what kind of code is running within that um, trusted execution environment, and also that is running on a genuine hardware of that manufacturer. What we do then is, once uh, a validator wants to, to enter the network, we're doing the remote attestation and putting, it, putting the, uh, the information on the public ledger. So basically, everyone can just go on the public ledger and verify that he's talking to a genuine machine. Oh, sorry. Next one. So how does that sidechain technology look like in a more deeper scale? Um, sidechains just need a handful of TE-based validators. So it doesn't have to have thousands of nodes running. It's really just a handful. So it's very efficient. And as I mentioned, everything that happens on that sidechain is computed off-chain. So blocks can produce off-chain, thousands of blocks, and then just condensed and committed to, to the parachain, the relay chain, um, yeah, to gain that efficiency. Oh, sorry. So what are the advantages and benefits of our technology? It is unrivaled speed. So it allows us to transact 2,000 transactions per second on only one sidechain on the second layer. We are able to host around 500 sidechains on only one parachain. Means, theoretically, we can scale up to a million transactions per second on one parachain. We are using a privacy by design approach that really ensures that data can be protected and stay confidential uh, while it is computed off-chain. So it's not accessible publicly and transparent. It can be verified by everyone on, on the public ledger. And it also allows to connect to other light client blockchains like Ethereum. So you're able to run those light clients on the side chains and interact directly with another chain. But it also allows to open up TLS channels, so secure communication channels to traditional Web2 APIs. One of the most important fact, though, is that it allows an independent economic model on the side chains. Means you can really transact a lot right, um, if it's necessary, without paying fees every time. And transactions that are finally hitting our parachain, they amount to less than a cent per transaction. So after knowing more about the advantages, we would like to also understand what can it be used for. Today, we're talking about blockchain gaming. So decentralized games uh, require confidentiality to a certain degree, but also they need low latency to really compete with traditional games, because a game that is lagging all the time or you have to wait a minute for a tra transaction confirmation isn't fun. But besides that, our sidechain technology can also serve a wider range of use cases, like decentralized exchanges, you could prevent front-running by using our confidential layer, but also identity protocols that are running on different chains and they want to link identities between chains can benefit from that technology. Let's have a closer look at one of the use cases. So we have worked with Ayuna very closely over the past months to really develop a foundation for future blockchain games that can benefit from that work. If you have missed the presentation yesterday of Ayuna, just giving you a heads up, Ayuna is a decentralized ecosystem for gamers and creators that is integrating seamlessly uh, modern uh, game development uh, engines like Unity and Unreal. But also, it offers a toolbox to create on-chain assets and virtual goods. Let's have a closer look at the architecture. 
So we are using a hybrid architecture with two parachains working hand in hand. On the first layer, layer zero, you see the relay chain. It might be Kusama or Polkadot. On the first layer, you see the integrity parachain that is serving as a registry for those uh, trusted execution environments. And on the other side, the IUNA parachain that is serving needs like game matching, NFTs, uh, final game states, and rankings. On the second layer, you can see a game-specific sidechain that is running the, the game logic. And part of that game logic is confidential. And you see that the sidechain can interact with external players, one and two in this case, but also is interacting with both of the parachains. So our solution enables games really to leverage the benefits without having the, the downsides of blockchain. And what we provide is confidentiality of uh, game states during the game, because you don't want someone to exploit your next move be before the transaction gets actually committed to the chain. You have verifiable integrity, means that the game logic doesn't change. You can, pr you can verify that during the game, right? We provide low latencies for a high quality gaming experience and dimensioned scalability of 2,000 transactions per second per sidechain. If you need more, you can just uh, launch a second sidechain and add another 2,000 uh, 2, transactions per second. So you can scale horizontally. And this is the result of our work. I mean, you're, uh, after the presentation of Ayuna uh, yesterday, you're already eager to, to learn more about um, the battle mocks. But in the meantime, you will be able to play Dot for Gravity. It's a mobile-based game where players can play against each other, place bombs, and um, yeah, that, that will definitely be uh, fun. And this is the first game that will leverage and use our next generation uh, decentralized architecture and enterprise-grade infrastructure. Coming to an, to an end, um, I want to say a big thanks to all the partners, collaborators um, that, are, that helped us um, using our technology or uh, integrating with us, but also at the same time, a big thanks to the community that, made, that, that wo voted for us and made that speech happen. We want to also announce that we will launch soon our Polkadot crowd loan campaign. And if you want to support us, um, that would be much appreciated. And yeah, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. All right, thank you, Valdemar. So we have two questions here. The first one, I don't know if you can answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there a contract solution for auto battle play to earn games? Again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is there a contract solution for auto battle play to earn games? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I would and, say. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is, what would you like to see TEEs be used for this next year or the coming years? Well, the, the beauty of trusted execution environments are that, that they are not, not only <clears throat> narrowed for specific use cases, like token transfers, right? So trusted execution environments are capable to, to run really heavy, computational heavy stuff, <laughs> right? And it, it, can, it can be used for any use case, basically, that's, uh, that needs a certain degree of confidentiality and that kind of scalability, right? So it can be healthcare, it can be gaming, as, as we saw, right? Really solving uh, pressing issues. But yeah, I mean, I'm happy to see that um, that usage will just grow across different industries. Wonderful. And that was it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>